All right, so last time I was talking to you about the rules for the discernment of spirits, spirits uh, one and two. Uh, the first two rules for discernment of spirits. And, and one big overarching theme was that um, one's own disposition should have an effect on how we receive effectively uh, in, in our subjectivity and our, our emotions uh, the movements of either the good spirit or, or the bad spirit. Right? Whether or not it's diabolical forces, an enemy messing with us, or if it's the Holy Spirit, it's going to be received in different ways by different people. So it's not the case that just if you have peace and joy, it's God. Uh, that would require that you actually like God, right? and you like godly things. This is spoken of, too, by St. Anthony of the Desert uh, in the 4th century, one of the early fathers of monasticism. Uh, St. Anthony of the Desert, his life is written of by St. Athanasius, a doctor of the church. One of our first hagiographies, one of the first um, lives of a saint that has ever been written in Christianity. St. Anthony says this, The vision of the holy ones, that is, angels, the good spirit, or a good spirit, when God some, or something godly comes to you, the vision of the holy spirits is not fraught with distraction, but they will not strive, nor cry, nor shall anyone hear their voice, but it comes so quietly and gently that immediately joy, gladness, and courage arise in the soul. For the Lord who is our joy is with them and the power of God the Father and the thoughts of the soul remain unruffled and undisturbed so that it, that it enlightened as it were with rays beholds itself by itself those who appear. For the love of what is divine and of the things to come, possess it. So the disposition is there. And willingly, it would, it would be wholly joined with them if it could depart along with them. So if the, if the, if the angels are going to go, I wish I could go with you. That, would, that, would, that, that really does speak to the disposition of the person, right? Um, so I think, I think St. Ath Athanasius, or Saint, Saint Athanasius uh, giving us the words of St. Anthony of the desert is, uh, you know, it's remarkable because he's saying something so close to St. Ignatius. Fourth century, the early 300s, uh, it, we have some of the same things being said as what Ignatius would say in the 1500s. Uh, in the 1600s, St. Francis de Sales says something similar about, um, about the nature of consolation, which we'll be getting to now today with uh, rule number three, where uh, Ignatius gives us a definition of what is consolation. What is it specifically? Spiritual consolation. But Francis Sales calls it, uh, he talks more specifically about inspiration. Inspiration is a heavenly ray that brings into our hearts a warm light that makes us see the good and fires us on to its pursuit. So God works this in us both to desire and to work, uh, to, to, to quote uh, Philippians. So that's St. Francis de Sales speaking in his uh, classic, and he's also a doctor of the church, by the way, uh, his classic, The Treatise on Divine Love. All right, so what is consolation to St. Ignatius of Loyola? It's basically that ray of divine light that urges us on. He says, I name it spiritual consolation when some inner motion is prompted in the person of such a kind that he begins to be aflame with love of his creator and Lord. Aflame with love. Not simply that he loves him, but that it's, that it's kind of stoked, that it's intensified, that there's really an effective feeling of love for the creator. And consequently, when he cannot love any created thing on the face of the earth in itself, but only in the creator of them all. So everything else seems as nothing unless it's connected with God. Likewise, I call it consolation when a person pours out tears, moving to love of his Lord, whether it be for sorrow over his sins or over the passion of Christ our Lord or over other things directly related to his service and praise. So tears, what would seem to be sadness, actually uh, thought of as a, as, a, as a sign of consolation because uh, the, if maybe you've had an experience of true, of true contrition, um, but these, these tears can be consoling. Finally, I call it spiritual consolation. Every increase in faith, hope, and charity, and every inward gladness, which calls and attracts to heavenly things and to one's personal salvation, bringing peace, bringing repose and peace 
in his creator and Lord. This is one of the big pieces that's remarked on is that consolation brings peace and repose. Um, so it's not uncommon to hear in different Christian and Catholic circles um, the, this, this looking for peace in one's decision making, looking for um, empowerment. What do you really desire? What do you really want? Maybe that's where you're con consoled and that's where you should go. Not what St. Ignatius is saying here. It's not what it's not Ignatian. Uh, and it's not really what I can find anywhere in the tradition. Uh, so let's let's break that down a little bit. Uh, he says, consolation, every increase in faith, hope, and charity, of inward gladness, and things like that. It's an increase, but it's not necessarily of of actual faith, hope, and love that's being increased per se. It, it's that it's that affective feel of faith of being faithful and hopeful. And loving, and the reason I say this is because even amidst desolation, when you have no gladness, uh, the Holy Spirit is still operative there uh, at another layer, making us have acts of faith, hope, and love. We won't say at the one of the highest points of Jesus' own work that he was totally in in consolation. He was also very much in desolation when he was making the ultimate acts of faith or or of love on the cross, right? And, and so. We, we should look to our Lord, too, and say, okay, what does it mean if I'm sweating sweating blood in a garden uh, in desolation? Uh, is it the case that at that time I have no faith, hope, and love? No. Um, that would be a really sad thing. Because that would mean that we're only good Christians when we're in consolation. Um, one of the great commentators on the rules for the discernment of spirits and the English-speaking world in the 20th century is a guy named Jules toner. And he writes about this specific thing. He says that we have to sever this bond between spiritual courage and energy that spiritual consolation gives us and, um, and a kind of a, a continual kind of baseline peace that every Christian should have, that, our, that our, our hearts are guarded in a certain kind of peace at some level within ourselves, even if we're sad that there's something that says God's got this in control, that even if I'm crying tears or I'm depressed, that there's a general overall faith and hope that's still there. We've got to distinguish that from these, these moments of an intensif intensified feeling of it. He, he says that some speak scornfully of loving and serving God and neighbor with gritted teeth, as if there were any alternatives at time for those who want to be faithful. Those who speak this way seem uninformed about Christian experience or else blinded by a thesis of joy as the sign of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is only operating whenever, when I, surely whenever I'm in joy. No, sometimes it's just we, with gritted teeth amidst desolation, we make acts of faith, hope, and love. Nevertheless, right, according to Francis de Sales again, he says, without inspiration, our souls would live idle, sluggish, and useless lives. But with the coming of the divine rays of inspiration, we feel a light mingled with a life-giving warmth that enlightens our understanding and awakens and animates our will by giving it strength to will and to do what pertains to eternal salvation. So we still need inspirations every once in a while. We need every once in a while God to stoke our spirits and our emotions to give us these, this, a boost. Um, so that's one piece, right? The other piece is um, it's not always easy to know whether or not you have a spiritual consolation or just some consolation uh, of a natural kind. Let's say I have a really pretty awesome life, pretty consoled, cush, uh, and, and, and then all of a sudden I, I, I feel a boost. Um, well, is it God or is it just something I ate? Uh, is it is it something that I'm looking forward to this evening? Is it is it that I see that my my the, the next set of episodes on uh, the Netflix show I like is up? Um, it's hard to tell if I'm really boosted from a place where I'm already boosted. Uh, an easier time actually is whenever you have a contrast, whenever life isn't going so well, or there's a difficulty, or you're not consoled, and you're kind of in a natural state of desolation. Not that you're being oppressed or something like that. When I say desolation here, I'm saying of a natural kind that's easy to know where it's coming from. Uh, if in spite of that, there's a kind of lifting to making acts of faith, hope, and love that seem to be in some way inspired, that's a good sign that it's it, it, it's it's God working, right? And so 
spiritual consolation can actually be helped by contrast. And so this is one of those silver linings of having a, a tough time in life sometimes. So we might actually be able to find uh, where God is moving by the contrast. Now, this, this, this sense of consolation sometimes is used as a way of trying to make decisions in Christianity. And, uh, and Ignatius isn't against it. In fact, his rules for the discernment of spirits has to do with a certain mode of decision making where you would weigh the motions of the soul over time. And I say over time, it's important to remark that. It's not just a one hit thing where I'm consoled in this one area and therefore I make a decision um, because I was consoled in that area. Uh, Ignatius in his, in his uh, spiritual diary remarks the times when he was given gifts of tears and when he was consoled and not over time. But what he's seeking out is a kind of confirmation overall. No decision is really made without some degree of, consola uh, of confirmation, which is a whole other topic. But it's an important one to know that there is a topic um, so that you don't go off and say, I was consoled in this way. I found peace and therefore I make a decision. Uh, it's not like that. Uh, there is a way in which one kind of inexplicably has a total conviction that something is an inspiration from God and you need to do it. That is a different thing. Uh, it's not simply that you're, you're taking a motion of the soul and putting it to an assessment of a criteria. You already have a certain moral certitude and no, no feeling of a need to go into any further discernment. You pretty well know what God wants. That's one mode. But another mode is you don't really know for sure. And so you're, you're, look, you're groping in the dark, it seems like, for what God wants you to do. It's not, maybe, it's, maybe the alternatives aren't something that the commandments tell you, this is wrong, this is right. You're trying to figure out what is better, what is to the greater glory of God. What does God really want me to do in this situation? And if you have consolations and desolations of a spiritual kind, they should be noted. Um, and, and, and they form part of uh, a whole tapestry, a matrix of sorts, of things that could go into uh, a decision-making process. But by itself, if you don't feel like you have a degree of certitude to make a decision, that you've done all that you can to make a decision, uh, then because there's a consolation doesn't mean that you're now obligated somehow because of peace or some, some, in some way that you need to make a decision when you're not really fully ready uh, and you have a certain degree of clarity. Continue to pray for that clarity. Continue to beg for it. Um, and and take, take consolations into account. Um, now, desolations don't mean that we should be making decisions one way or another either. So uh, desolations are basically vacant of any kind of information that would help us make decisions. Uh, more on that next time. We're going to go over the next set of the next rule and the next definition, which is going to be about spiritual desolation. Uh, it's important to to know that uh, if you don't have consolations, it doesn't mean that you're not doing well in your spiritual life. It could actually mean you're doing wonderfully well in your spiritual life, and God is entrusting you to be able to do heavy lifting amidst suffering and difficulty rather than con constantly consoling you. Consolations are especially prominent whenever he's going to woo a soul uh, that needs all of the help that it can get. And so... Um, we should be as indifferent as possible whether or not consolations come and go. What we can't do, and what Ignatius won't stand for, is being neutral or indifferent about desolations. We have to fight against those. We don't go groping for consolations, but we've got to fight uh, desolations. And, and so that's what we'll talk about next time. Uh, I hope this is helpful uh, in maybe putting some context on the place for interior um, a kind of affective peace and joy uh, that it, they're important but they're oftentimes fleeting and, uh, and they can work our way toward a decision but they don't make the decision for us as good Christians. It doesn't, uh, prudence isn't reduced down to something uh, so emotive and, and transitory. Uh, and even Ignatius uh, gives us good rules for that. Um, and we, we, hear, we hear Francis Sales talking about it. We hear um, Anthony of the Desert. So by way of closing, three good marks, three of the best and surest ways to know if you have a lawful inspiration according to St. Francis of Sales and his treatise on uh, divine love. The three best and surest marks of lawful inspiration are perseverance in contrast to 
in constancy and levity. Peace and gentleness of heart in contrast to disquiet and solicitude. And humble obedience in contrast to obstinacy and extravagance. So three things, perseverance, peace and gentleness of heart, and humble obedience. These are marks of lawful inspirations. He'll even go to the point of saying one of the first things that the Holy Spirit inspires is proper obedience. And so you'll 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 get you'll get a good sense of of this as you as you continue going on. I hope this is helpful and I look forward to talking to you again soon.